Rulers of the Ancient World in a box set put out by the Folio Society. This big, massive slipcover that contains all five books. Otherwise, it's not particularly special. Really, each of these books deserves to be considered separately. There's really nothing about them except their treatment by the Folio Society. There's nothing particularly um, that, that pulls them together. They are each about a different ruler of the ancient world, but other than that, they're different. They have different authors, for example, okay? So we'll, we'll take them, and this may be a slightly longer than usual video, but uh, you can also see that they've all been worn. That's, that's part of what happens. I suppose when I read them, so uh, the we may even see some of the, you know, the, um, the difference between the spine versus the rest of the book in color. That's because the spine is facing out into the light, and the rest of it is protected by the by the slipcover. We have Julius Caesar. It looks a little thin this way. When I hold it a little bit better into the light, you can see how it shows up. It's cool. It's a cloth binding. Julius Caesar. As I say, they're all written by different people. This is a map of the of Rome, the time when Caesar was around. This one by Christian Meyer, originally in German, translated by David McClintock. I said it once, I've said it a thousand times. When you read books that weren't originally written in your language, it's important to know who translated it. Now, if there's only one translator, then that then it doesn't really matter very much, but if there are lots of translators, then they can really make a difference. I'm not talking about this Julius Caesar book. The truth is, I really uh, don't know about other translations. I got this one. But if I were to talk about this book with someone, I would say, well, I have this version translated by this guy. The paper feels nice. It's not, it's a reasonable thickness, but it has, you can actually see there, you see a bit of texture on the paper. And I like that. It feels kind of cool. It feels like you're handling paper made by someone and not uh, just sort of spit out in a factory somewhere. It's pretty cool. It's got plenty of little illustrations and, well, yeah, illustrations or images throughout. And, I don't know, maybe not everyone finds Julius Caesar fascinating. I find him pretty fascinating. So, I've, I have read each one of these, um, and uh, I, I did, I liked them all. I think, I'm trying to remember I could say which one I liked better or, not, or other, because there were some that, that I found less interesting. The most interesting of all, for me, was this Hannibal right here. So it's got the same treatment by Folio Society. Of course, they're all sewn and uh, sewn binding, and they all are bound in this cloth. Um, and they all have this kind of cover in the front, this sort of interesting way of showing up in the light. This one, now for Hannibal, of course, we don't just, we can't just look up here. We have to come down here to where Carthage is, uh, down here. And Hannibal famously went and roved around Italy and just did whatever, really, whatever he wanted. Um, and they didn't know, they would have expected him, they were expecting him to come uh, attack, but of course they would have expected something like that or even like that, or maybe even like that, but of course he came around this way, famously came over the Alps, and uh, came that way as a complete surprise. At least that's how I remember it. It has the same kind of binding, the same paper that I just said that I love, so I won't go over all that with uh, each time. Um, but all right, so this one, written by Ernle? Ernley, Ernley, Bradford, introduced by Kenneth McLeish. I found it so interesting. I didn't know much about the battles, you know, between Carthage and and Rome at the time. I didn't really know 
I mean, I, he, I knew he was, Hannibal was famous for his elephants or something, but I really didn't know about all this stuff, and it's really, really interesting to me. I really love it. So, but we have other books to move on to. This one is Nero. Again, the same treatment here. But I will at least... This is the Roman Empire at that time. Now we're, now we're a little bit later, A.D. 68. Michael Grant Sane, Kenneth McLeish introducing it. And again, same, same, similar treatment with there are maps and images inside and the paper. I just love this paper. Let's take a look at the paper because they'll mention what it is. Printed on Balmoral laid paper by St. Edmundsbury Press. Well, I like it. I should look out for that. Here we have Cleopatra. Cleopatra. Some people are surprised that she doesn't look Egyptian, but she really, of course, came from Alexander the Great's blood. Greek, Macedonian kind of thing. Let's see who wrote it. Jack Lindsay. Same introduction, or rather the same person introducing it. And this isn't uh, in any kind of great order here, but this one is Alexander the Great himself, who really maybe should have come before, because of course he came before all the rest of these uh, in, in time. And this image is of his route where he traveled was pretty much everywhere that he knew about. This one also I found interesting. I would, I guess I would say that it was this one and the Nero one that I, I mean, sorry, this one and the uh, Hannibal one that I found the most interesting. Robin Lane Fox, famous historian. Um, I think Folio Society loves Robin Lane Fox. They've, they've got a bunch of his stuff. Found in 1997. And uh, yeah, so here we go. Five of the rulers of the ancient world in very nice feeling, nice looking Folio Society editions.